about uh, early in the season for walleyes is start thinking shallow. Too many anglers, they get it in their mind that walleyes like, you know, sharp breaks, they like 15 feet of water, uh, they like humps, things like that. And they do like all those things, but many times that is more of a summertime pattern. When walleyes first come off of the spawn, and like if we're fishing natural lakes in, in Wisconsin when the opener first starts, many times the fish are just post-spawn and many times they're very, very shallow. And when I'm talking shallow, I'm talking five or six feet and less. So that's sometimes a little hard for anglers to get in their mind. Why is that fish up so shallow? Many times they're up that shallow because that's where the warmest water is. And the warm water is starting to give you plants, starting to give you little bugs and microorganisms and things to eat. Where there's something to eat, that's where the walleyes will be. And early in the season, most of the stuff to eat is going to be up shallow. The hard part about shallow water fishing is finding the fish. You know, there's tons of shallow water in any lake you go in, a big percentage of it is shallow, even shallow structure and stuff. And the problem is, is you can't use your fish finder to find them. You can't drive around and graft because it's so shallow, your cone angle is very small, it's hard to see fish. Plus, the, the boat just going over these shallow fish would probably spook them to the side and not let you mark them. So a lot of times you actually have to fish to find the fish. Now, one of the first things you can do to give yourself some advantages is to look at a map and try and pick out high percentage areas. High percentage areas to me are many times where, where there's what I would call a bumper. There's some kind of a sharp break, and maybe that break is only going from one foot down to three foot, or four foot down to six. I mean, there's a sharp little break there. On Winnebago, we do a lot of shallow water fishing early up against riprap shorelines, where people have thrown, you know, uh, stuff in to stop uh, erosion makes for a fairly sharp break right at shore. And the reason those are good spots is because walleyes need to uh, basically herd minnows and capture them. They got to chase them down. And if you've got a real gradual shoreline like a sand beach and the walleyes are chasing the minnows, the minnows can quite frankly get up so shallow the walleyes can't follow them. Get what I'm saying? Whereas on a bumper area, a sharp area, the walleyes will chase them, they'll hit this bumpier area and kind of get confused or corralled. And they can run them into that wall and get them. So that's what we want to look for. So when you're looking on your contour maps, whether it's a paper map, or maybe you've got the nice uh, contour maps right on your GPS, look for where the dark lines are close to each other. That's a sharper break. All right, and look for that up in shallow water. The other thing you want to look for in that shallow water is where's the wind blowing? You always want to be foot fishing or trying to fish where the wind is blowing into. It does two things. The, just the wind blowing in creates some waves and riles up the water that typically breaks loose the bugs and organisms and the minnows come in and they're eating. Everybody's happy. It's kind of a, a big old party you're going on in there wherever the wind is blowing. But the other important thing is the wind will also take the surface water which is typically warmer, and blow that and concentrate that into smaller areas. So you got warm water, you got active water, you got a lot of things happening. So we're going to look for a bumper with wind blowing into it. That's the first thing I'm going to look for.